This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. Run it back. We've got another major news alert, and this episode is brought to you by HK Army. If you are going to Texas for the NXL Lone Star Major, you are not going to want to miss out on this unbelievable deal as HK Army is offering $20 cases of paint again to anyone attending the event from April 26th to the 28th. And that means anyone, any teams, regardless of sponsorship, can get level 5 exclusive tournament paint for only $20 a case, and the new formula is shooting outstanding. HK is always doing what they can to make the best paintballs more cost-effective for you, and all you got to do is hit up my boy, the Leopard King, Chad Yaya Boucher, who is the sponsorship coordinator for HK Army, to reserve your paint today. Email him right now at chad at hkarmy.com to secure your spot on the paint list. Once again, that's chad, C-H-A-D, at hkarmy.com. And do not wait. This is going to sell out. Email him right now and secure your paint for Texas. PTG family, we love you. Thank you all for continuing to support the PTG show. We are truly forever grateful for each and every single one of you that tunes in on a weekly basis. And if you are enjoying these episodes and want to help with the progress and development of this program, head on over to ptgpodcast.com. Click the orange Patreon link and become a member of our community. That's where you can connect with hungry, like-minded paintball players, enjoy paintball seven days a week in our exclusive chat rooms, and ensure that we can continue to keep cultivating the future of paintball for years to come. It's all love for paintball. It's all love for PTG. We can't wait to see you in there. Head over to ptgpodcast.com and become a member of our community. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. This episode, we have the boys over from Paintball Stats. They're making a huge splash on social media, and they are bringing some exciting stuff to the game. Statistics are a very important part of any sport, so the fact that we have them now and at this capacity, uh, brought to you by Sam Monville and Patrick McKenna, is really uh, some breaking news and some really exciting stuff. So we dive deep into... Um, All of the metrics behind the stats, their vision for this entire thing, and what they plan to do uh, in the near, near future. So, without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting, Harmon. Great great shot by all the guys. Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, everybody, we have the paintball stats team here, Pat McKenna and some Sam Monville of Houston Heat. Let's uh, go. You guys are making the world tour right now. You guys are just over on the Spick and Span show. You guys are dropping lots of lots of content on the Instagram. Paintball stats are, are kind of booming. It's an exciting time right now. So uh, thank you for joining us. We're excited to have you on the show. And uh, how's it going? Thanks for having us, Marcel. Yeah, Glad to be here. Of course. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Sammy. You know, this is a, this is a dual show, Pat, you know that, you know, so (laughs) I know you're thanking only Marcelo there, but you know, I'm 50% over here. Yeah, You're like family, Tyler. It's like, it's like weird. It's like seeing your brother at the dinner table and just being like, thanking everybody. Yeah. Don't take your family for granted. You know, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. Don't take your family for granted. (laughs) <laughs> oh man well it's an honor to have you guys on i'm super excited to see you guys in a couple of days out at practice and get to work um, a lot of teams have already been working you know there's a lot of teams that had practice this last weekend we're getting into it starting tomorrow the layout's dropping so i'm excited to see everybody and we obviously got to dive into the project that you guys have been working so tirelessly on it's not an easy project it's strenuous it's time consuming it takes a lot of effort money and all of the above 
So talk to us how this whole thing started. How did paintball stats become a thing that you guys wanted to attack? Oh, I mean, I guess I'll start. So um, it's pretty well known that I've been taking stats in the league for a long time now. And um, at the end of last season, I, I thought I was done with pro paintball. And I had all this data and all this information. And I kind of listened to what Maddie was saying in that HK video about the five fingers um, of the marketing strategy and what was the, what needed to be done. And I talked to my wife at the time. I was like, you know, we should, we should put some of this information out. And I spend a lot of time with Sam and I keep a lot of this stuff private. Like uh, bird has access to it. Todd had access to it. Um, whoever I work for had access, but player wise, I don't really release it. And I told Sam what I was going to do. And, and Sam was like, well, what do you, what is it going to look like? And so we had a meeting with some people that really were interested in it. And um, Sam got a hold of all the data and he started uh, creating everything that we have now. Uh, the QBR, our version of the QBR rating, the war rating, all that stuff. Sam is a big fantasy guy. And um, he took the raw data that had been presented and then just went down the rabbit hole. Um, he calls me at one or two in the morning when he has a new idea and I have to try to talk him out of it. Um, it's uh, it's pretty much a nonstop thing that we've been doing now for about about four months. Dude, I absolutely love this. And actually, I was really excited to talk to you guys about exactly that fantasy because Tyler and myself have the Play Fantasy paintball uh, app. We have the whole system, all the integration with Go Sports and finally having a metric that we can use because, you know, before it was runoff kill count. Um, but we don't, we don't have that, but to have like a, uh, you know, player rating that number works just the same. So it's something that, you know, hopefully we can figure out a way to work together mm -hmm. and, and bring fantasy paintball to the masses as well, because I think that's so good for the engagement of the game. You know, it's so good to keep, uh, fans and, you know, your average, you know, go sports watcher, they're going to be so much more engaged if they have something on the line, you know, if they have like, even if you're not winning money or you're not it's just the competition of it you know like when you have a team and you know like okay i want to tune in because tyler's on my team you know i need to see how he does this match you know i'm i'm invested uh it's a it's a really great way to keep people involved in sports and you see it in all other sports it's i i watch so much more football when i'm playing fantasy football than i would when i'm not you know i watch so many more teams i'm curious to learn about the teams i want to know you know the injury reports i'm like really locked into all the content Exactly. And that's one of those things that like I've devised a whole fantasy game using our stats. Um, it's pretty close to fantasy football. Um, the way you pick your players, the positions, the flex, all of that is encompassing in it. And it's pretty into simply intuitive. Like, uh, you know, I've run a couple simulations of like six, uh, you know, six people leagues and kind of how the composition would be of people's teams and i sat there with Moorhead and was like just look at the teams that this could devise you know with this information he's like that's pretty cool it's like yeah, yeah you know we just we haven't branched out into that that's also something that's uh what i would consider more accurate to what goes on out there and you know we all know the holy grail is kill count but man, it's at the, in the current state of things, I don't care what people say. It's not possible. And it's going to skew so heavily towards certain individuals. If mouse crawls all the way down, shoots four people, he's probably going to get four or five kills on his thing. But how do you equate for somebody like you, Marcelo, where it's like, where do your kills come from? You know what I mean? Like it's let, we can't record this with enough accuracy to give the correct value to for what people do so we have to use a more understandable baseline to go head to head it's like I, did you survive did you not yeah. how many points did you play like what was your win percentage and if you add all of that cumulatively you can get a better picture of how a player performed yeah, I love all the other metrics that are that are involved in what you guys are doing. I love the pl the player rating. However, I do believe that it is possible to keep a fairly accurate, maybe not 100% accuracy, but a pretty accurate even for a position I play. It just it requires a a decent amount of spending and it requires experienced statisticians, you know, a team yeah. that understands the game and also understands the layout, right? Like the preparation would have to be there so you understand 
what positions can shoot certain things. And, you know, you do have to have a really high level of paintball IQ, I'd say, to be able to at least get us in the, you know, it's funny, we're talking about percentages, quote unquote, mm -hmm. before the show, but in the like 80, 90% accuracy, um, 100% accuracy, I don't know, you know, that might never be possible without yeah. certain technology uh, advancements, you know what I mean? Um, but I do think we can get to a place to where still like that, kill, that kill count is so important that Pat we can use the term qualified, qualified people to do it. Yeah. And just like anything in life to get a qualified person, it's a hefty price. Absolutely. That's, so that's where we talk about it, where it's like, yeah, we could have a lot of things on these stats and something like a kill count, but you're going to need a decent amount of qualified individuals and those qualified i mean think about how much better and nothing against the people that do it now but think about how refing would be if we had the three of us and pat out there on one side of the field compared to what the status quo is on the other side of the field we just know the flow of the game kind of how the breakdowns are about to happen when things are going to start breaking down and stuff it would be different and it's just because of our experience. So to get to that level of kill count, it's probably going to be when all of us retire and we decide to take that torch up. But <laughs> yeah. until mm -hmm. that happens. How many you would need at least one body per player to decisively track everything and get close to the 90 to 100 percent accuracy because and then you would have to cross reference with those statisticians saying, hey, what did you see here? What did you see here? OK. Um, and, and then you can move towards that, you know, really high percentage, but that takes a tremendous amount of money and, and just manpower. It's so much work. Paintball yeah, access service. Mm -hmm. We actually have a member of paintball access's uh, team on our team. Oh, awesome. wow. Nice. Yeah. So like we have Fantastic. that experience and that's been great because he's been able to kind of tell us what the challenges they went through, what happened, but mm -hmm. paintball access that on field or in like when they were in like the, uh, the lifts and stuff they had 12 watchers and then they had three to five people running the booth where they were actually putting the data in so i mean at minimum you're talking about 12 guys or girls, yeah. right yeah and yeah i thought they had eight holy smokes 12 no they That's had 12. a lot of bodies so they had eight so like there was one time they tried eight on the field and then four in the booth yeah, there was a lot. It was a massive okay. investment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we work with that gentleman because he kind of gives us some insight. Um, Darren from Go Sports also was around then. He's given us mm -hmm. a lot of insight on it. Um, we want to get, we want to go to the next level, but that is a large financial investment. That's and awesome. we're currently at square one. We're still trying to get this paid for. And like right. Sam mentioned, the, we're having to bring in qualified people. So I'm having to find uh, semi-pro or above level individuals that have legit experience, not like, oh, I, I signed up and played semi-pro after my first D4 win. Um, <laughs> guys that understand the game that have been around a long time. Like uh, one of them is, uh, is Zach Stewart. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's from the static program back yeah. in the day. Um, he had tons of experience, played for 15 years. They were a high-level semi-pro team out of Florida at a CFP. Nice. Um, so like we, we had to bring him in, but he was coaching a semi-pro team. So we had to, we had to pretty much buy him out and bring him onto the staff. And that's probably our biggest hurdle is in the same thing we all overcome is, is the financial commitment to make it yeah. happen. Hmm. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, cause again, this is a massive undertaking and my concern is always, how is it sustainable? Right. Um, it's really important what you guys are doing for the sport. In my opinion, it's really important to have this kind of content, to have stats, but how is it sustainable? Is there a product that you guys are also offering that can help offset the cost or, or yeah, what's the, what's the game plan? Uh, so yeah, we are currently working with, uh, so we have a, a two facet plan here. Uh, one is to work with uh, people within the industry um, that might be interested in supporting it uh, via sponsorship. We have a uh, Sam is in charge of that. We have a sponsorship package where you can sponsor the entire event for us. You can sponsor posts or stories. Um, and then when it comes to the second portion, we, uh, we beta tested this in Vegas, um, teams. So all the data is being collected live. So teams can actually pro teams only can buy the data live and be able to see everything that we're actually posting today. Mm -hmm. And they can see it through the event and then use that. So we had a couple teams that, uh, that, that tried it out and, uh, we had some bugs ready to work out and we'll still have that again in Texas. 
Well, let me be and, the first to say and, that yeah. we would love to support anything that you guys are doing. So any way that we can help, um, please let us know. And I, I would like to think that you're kind of capping yourself by just keeping it to the, pro, to the pros. I think that you could uh, make it available to divisionals and they would look at that and be like, wow, look at what these teams are doing. Look what these teams are doing. And that could be a way that you could drive more capital to sustain it, you know, and because I know for a fact, so many divisional players would eat that up just to see Probably. all that information of what the pros are doing and being able to implement that and raise the levels of the divisional play as well. So that's something that we would probably like to do in the future. Um, but right now, since this is an active system, the pro yeah. teams are using it at the tournaments. Yes. So what we're trying to yeah. do is we're trying to like uh, like teams that are 10 through 20, right? That maybe not have the budget to bring, to fly somebody in, sit in the stands yeah. all day to make that commitment. They can they can buy our they can buy our information and be able to use that to uh, to play and you know um, uh, Bird and I talked about it and Randy we talked about it before because I'm still involved with Heat I'm still doing that with you guys but yes, like sir. just to give you an example Baltimore Revo baited the program we played them in the prelims mm -hmm. so they were getting very similar data to what we had and it really it's still it comes down to the players and I I think I yeah. have the best players in the game so um, let's go baby it make, makes it easy, but that information is there. Um, eventually, yeah, Tyler, we'd love to get it out to the divisional people so they can look at it. But right now we, we need to control it because we also use this as our marketing strategy um, mm -hmm. and, and use this to be able to put out our content, which me and Sam's goal was to put out one post per day between the events. And we got pretty close to it. Yeah. Sam has been crushing it with the, uh, yeah. the IG. I, Pat, document. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not understanding what, what the, drawback or setback would be by also offering it to divisional teams um so to be honest with you i would uh i would prefer to keep it within the pro ranks because we do have contracts with the uh with the pro teams that that use the information um so that it's it is proprietary there is uh analytics that are used alongside the software that we couldn't just release out mm -hmm. um and the other pro teams have access to that during the event it cuts off after the event so then we can use it for our marketing, but during the event, it's uh, it's for hmm. the pro teams only. Interesting. One day, okay. if we had, one day if we had enough information, enough infrastructure, yeah, I'd love. I mean, in XL Europe, the people over there have yeah. contacted Sam and I. Um, we'd love to go farther than that, but it's a financial thing, right? You have to have control and understand what people are doing with it. Yeah, I guess just if I'm a pro team and my realization is that every other pro team has access to it what do i care if divisional teams have access to it they're not we we were not well, not every play. other pro team's buying it right now not yet they're going to yeah not yet <laughs> oh, our goal is for everybody to buy it you're right marcel yeah. if we got to if we got to a point where like and i've talked to tom about this sam's talked to him you know if the league would in, if the league was an investor and wanted to use this and then distribute this data freely then we then that would be fine but right now it's proprietary it's how we're making our income it's mm -hmm. how we're paying for the show of mm -hmm. course. And is it, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to just ask, are you guys both the owners or how does that work? Pat, are, are you the sole owner? Is there multiple owners and how many people are a part of this team that is being fielded out there to go and get all this data? Because it, I, I know I see y'all in the pits, so I know you guys aren't getting the data. Out there. So who's, uh, who's out there getting all this for you guys? <laughs> uh, so Sam and I have a partnership and uh, we have some, uh, a few other people involved. Um, the nice. amount of people that we have are, uh, I would say we have uh, probably 10 people involved in the project total. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And all the, all the data is, as you said, live, right? You guys aren't yeah. going back and watching film. This is all done there at the event. At the event How yeah. is it, uh, updated in real time? Yeah. You can watch them draw it as they go. Wow. Like you okay. can be sitting and, in the pits and, and see it all happen. And that website is going to be launching soon. Uh, so the so the uh, the cloud site is already launched. We um, we we tested it. We had four teams use it in uh, Vegas, uh, uh, plus Heat because we always use it, obviously. Um, and we will continue. We do have a website coming. Sam's working on it. the website. We'll have all the data. It'll have all the players, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But we have every player in the league that actually stepped on the field and played paintball. We have every single one of their points, all their information, all their data. You can pick a player, awesome. and we can talk about them. That's amazing. And yeah. Sam, I want to dive into this with you because I know you had a lot and both of you have been working tirelessly on this, but um, building the the paintball metrics and, you know, what that looks like, um, all the details of, of what's going into building these player scores 
And I don't think that all like 200 players are a part of the score. I think it's like, what was it like 150 or 160? Because some of them have asterisks and something like that. But kind of, I want to start diving into the details of the, the metrics for paintball stats and how it's all come together. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. it was, I keep on telling people like I was going slightly <laughs> crazy. I, you know, yeah, we talked this, the on event. the way. Yeah. It was like practice and then the event and I had to stay after for the summit and I went home for like 11 hours and I went to Asheville, North Carolina for my girlfriend's birthday. And then that was St. Patrick's day weekend. I yeah. was just, I got back and I was, I was a raisin. I was dehydrated. Everything, <laughs> and I could not sleep. And, uh, Pat was getting messages till 4 a.m. And I was just going perfectly Kanye crazy to create something. And I literally was sitting there and I was like, look at, I was like, I was actually looking at sports stats. And then I was like, well, they have these ratings. Like, why don't we have like a rating system? Cause I'm, and I started researching how they started, how they you, like make them. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, we have enough information to do something like that. And then I just started messing with it and i was like okay well this needs to be valued higher than this and then this needs to be valued higher than this because of this and then i just slowly devised with what i would say is accurate as information as we can get using those metrics because we can quantify them we can go back look to see if you did this and say well that's that happened so using truths and putting value to them and then weighting them, we can give you a pretty accurate score of what you did. And it's the one thing I keep on using is Patrick Mahomes with a QBR. Well, perfect QBR is like a 156.4, some it's somewhere around there. 158.3. 158.3. Well, he he won the Super Bowl and he was in 98.4. Would would we all say he's probably the best quarterback in the NFL? Mm-hmm. That's uh, yeah. No doubt. Like, let's let's be serious then. So a perfect rating is, even in football, is unrealistic. Yeah. So when I'm when I was making it, I was like, well, that'd be pretty impossible. And uh, the then I started taking because we had all of this stuff for World Cup. I was like, well, I can just take everybody's stuff from World Cup and start messing with it and seeing where people would be, and then start to adjust it, being like, well, then clearly this is weighted too much because this player didn't do this much and started doing it and got it to a point where it was like, well, this is telling a really accurate story of what happened. And for the top end, the two players I used was Greenspan and Chris Shear. And then I kind of went down and used Mike Zupa and was like, he did a lot, played well, made to the finals. And the next player I used was Devin Stewart, who their team finished near the middle. So I could get kind of a metric and the things I needed to kind of see is where they would scale. And the one thing I always wanted was for if they had the identical stats, but Chris Shear went to more places off the break and risked more, he was just a couple points above Greenspan. And the reason being is a player going D1, D2, Dorito 50, then going short and then going up the middle compared to a guy that was only playing maybe the back center or one of the short bunkers. That guy risked way more. So if he made it alive and did everything identical as him, he should be slightly above because of the risk he took on by taking those positions. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of like where it started to flourish. And when I started to like really narrow down to try and tell the best story possible, and it's not much like if it's about five in the rating, about five points more you can get than a guy if everything else is identical, but he went to eight bunkers and you went to one, it's about five points. But those five points are pretty crucial when you're looking at two players head to head to say who really gave more to the game. You're going to have players being like, coach, send me here this one. <laughs> coach, I'm going to that one. Coach, I'm going Pat, up the middle. <laughs> Pat, what's the saying? <laughs> huh? What's the saying that Jason Edwards said? What about, oh yeah, so Jason said, I, I got credit for Jason on this one. When we were coming with the idea and we are like going to go public with it, I told Jason we want to do it. That's why he was the first one. Jason said, today it's a novelty. In three years, we're going to get paid, traded, and fired based on the data. <laughs> you know, that's what all sports are about. Them. They they look at the data, you know, and, and you take that stuff into account. 
take that stuff into account. So, I mean, it if is. we're getting if we're getting paid traded and in, in stuff on data, that means the sports probably gotten to a pretty good place. Absolutely. Maybe we sh we should be there. I think yeah. I think we uh we're hindering ourselves. I think we can get there with with all of us like contributing what you what you both you guys do is amazing, right? And it, it tells part of the story. Maddie tells part of the story. The other podcasts out there tell more. You know, we just need to have a way to quantify it so somebody that may not be interested in actually shooting the paintball gun, but maybe interested in the data. Like I like sports based on data. I don't actually care if I watch a game. I just want to watch, like I'm watching the NHL playoffs right now. I'm more interested in, in, in the, uh, how they're going to perform against each other in the wild card spot. There's four teams in it. And I'm just, I'm more interested in like how historically, how are they do each other against each other? How's it going to plan out? That's actually more entertaining to me than actually watching the game. And there's, hundreds of thousands of people out that are like that. And those are the people that are going down, they're betting. Those are the people that are, are watching ESPN for, you know, eight hours a day or watching the podcast. And that's really what it is, is ESPN uh, used to be a sports network. And now it's an opinion network where they just argue about stats all day. And I love it. And I want us to be able to argue about it. I want Marcel and Tyler to look at the stats they have and go, nah, I should be higher. You know, this guy wasn't better than me. <laughs> like, that's what I want it to be. Like, I want it to be a legitimate talking point where we can just go back and forth constantly and create a, a better narrative for our sport in a positive light because the things that we're showing in these stats a mom or a or a, or a dad that goes to a birthday party can now pick up that information and relate to it like how sam has connected it to the nfl or we use our war rating which is from the mlb and those things are what really drive people's interests um because at the end of the day we are playing a shooting game and if we could find another way to get people involved, then maybe they don't actually have to get hit. Like I'm not running out playing football. I don't want to get tackled. Um, so like getting out there and being able to see that information, I think is a, a good way to introduce people to the game. It's it's absolutely pivotal for, for the growth of our sport as a whole um, to have numbers. We Marcelo and myself have been talking about this for like, seems like forever, but, um, and we have, you know, we have had metrics in the past it's uh once again it's a very difficult task so that's why everyone needs to rally and help you guys too you know it's it's the paintball community's responsibility to support projects like this in order to have them be sustained into the future and something that can grow and develop and become really mature you know because right now um you have a ton of data and we're moving into obviously the second event of the season you've got everything from vegas and cup but there's also so much data from the past that we haven't even used and it's all there for the taking. I mean, even simple things like uh, teams playing each other and, and like those win losses on those organizations or like different time slots and different. Uh, there's so many metrics that are there prime for the picking that we still have from the past that we can even start to drive into the future alongside this to really you know, bolster it and make it have that much more weight too. Yeah. There's tons of stuff like that. And that's what makes paintball so awesome is because nobody's ever tapped this the way that it should be. So there's mm -hmm. just a bunch of it. Me and Sam probably have 40 posts, emergency posts that we keep in our pocket. 40? Including one, yeah, like probably 40. Would you say Sam about 40 that are like oh, pre-made? Um, and like <laughs> one we have is we have you two in Dallas last year. We have those metrics mm -hmm. because we both went oh, to wow. the finals, right? We played into overtime, so it was a really good comparison. Um, it's going to be one of our filler posts here, hopefully in the future. But we, yeah, uh, me and Sam, like put it all together so we'd have it, just so we could see the difference between you guys. You guys play the exact same amount of games through the exact mm -hmm. same tournament, all the way down to a a uh, um, overtime point. That'd be a and, cool uh, PTG face-off kind of thing. I like that. Yeah, well, we're going to definitely do it in the future. The yeah. thing when we went to the league and we explained them what we were doing, and they have their thing, we have our thing. Um, they were not as um, interested in our thing. They, they feel their thing is, is quantified enough to, to come up with stats. Um, and I explained to them like, Hey, we can do all these comparisons and we can do all this. And they want to know how many posts we could create between events. And Sam and I went through the process of figuring out how many posts we could create. And Sam came to a number about 400 posts between every event. Whoa. He wanted to just Damn. on the current data that we have. Yeah, so that, I was. I, that is some. Sorry, Tim. My bad. No, I was just saying that's yeah. that's uh, profound. That's crazy. Yeah. No, 
So that is something I wanted to ask you guys about, because obviously the league is doing stats as well, and it seems like they're doing something kind of similar. So it's strange to not be working side by side. Are your guys' metrics and stats different than theirs? Are they things that can coexist? You know, how, how do you guys see that relationship forming in the future? Well, we actually went to the league in January. I, I went there when, when, I, when we decided we were going to do this, and I talked to Tom, and I said, hey, we should all do this together. And Tom told me at the time, they asked me what, what our, our hypothetical budget was. And I said, here's what it's going to be. And uh, we went back and forth. And unfortunately, the league decided not to do it with us. Now, we were aware that they were doing their um, their plus minus stat, which they're very proud of. Um, and we started putting out our content. And we went back to the league. And we said, hey, we can do this together. We talked in Vegas. We've talked afterwards. And um, it's um, there's a hesitation by the league for them to want to cooperate with us and want to join in with us on this. And it's uh, it's honestly been frustrating because we talk about growing the game, but I think people forget at the end of the day, the NXL and Major League Paintball is a for-profit business and uh, they have shareholders they report to. And Tom is a phenomenal business person. And I think that's uh, that extra expense to have something that is not, that an ROI is not able to be calculated this time is something that they're not interested in spending. Yeah, you know, I, I think, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think Tom's hesitation, again, is how sustainable it is. You know, I know I would probably be fearful that, like, okay, if we have an infrastructure that works right now with stats, what these guys are doing, yeah, it's a splash. It looks great. But is it going to be, you know, or is it going to stick around for the long haul kind of thing, right? So I don't know. I would keep, I would continue to have those conversations because it makes sense for you guys to be working together. What you guys are doing is excellent. You know, I, I loved what they're doing too. Like the little posts that they've made, super cool as well. But you're right. There's no reason not to to be working together on this, in my opinion. I, I think, you know, imagine how much better the product could be if you just combined the <laughs> the funding and the ability yeah. and the manpower, you know? Yeah, and we agree with that. Um, and we, uh, we, we, kind of, we were kind of taken back by the post, honestly. Um, when we've done everything, we've always communicated with the league and um, that post shocked us the way that it was, the verbiage that was used. And honestly, it was, uh, I talked to Tom that day uh, because there was some, uh, there was some controversy. Uh, what, so, wait, what post are we talking about? The one for you. The other posts were all taken down. It's just the one post now. And the verbiage on that post ha is weird? Uh, for somebody that, for, uh, for an organization that literally offered to work with them on at any level to make paintball better. Uh, and then for them to, uh, for the, uh, the verbiage they used that we just thought it was entertaining. Hmm. I'm reading, I'm reading it right now. Um, I guess I, where's, where's it at yeah. the paintball stats? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Paintball stats. It's, uh, on NXL. Um, yeah. Well, what's funny is when I saw this, I originally thought it was you guys, right? It took me a sec to realize, you know, yeah. what it was. a lot of people but, did. A lot know, of people did. Well, we got about a hundred and I think Sam said our mailbox, like 136 emails within the first like 45 minutes and is people that, are super confused. Thing? Well, it's a bad thing when you're not actually collabing with them because yeah. then you're having to explain to people because we're currently working on deals with different industry individuals and right. the NXL, like once again, you got to remember the NXL is a for-profit business. So people are spending sponsorship dollars like platinum and gold and the other ones like that for the season expecting a return. And then we're talking to them at the same time. So we're having to double dip into the same industry and we talk about growing something, it doesn't really grow if everybody's trying to grab out of the same uh, candy jar instead of work together. Unless you make the candy jar a whole lot bigger. Yeah, but that's outside people, Marcel. We don't have that right now. We have we have in, we have a we have a self sustaining industry, and we need to all be cautious about how we communicate, how we work together, and how we come up with a better product. Um, so that's a big part of it. And uh, if you don't want to do it, if you want to hold on to all your uh, all your little pieces and not share then, you know, then products fail. And that's the unfortunate thing that Sam and I, uh, you know, we look at now, we have a, uh, we have a business plan. We are, we are moving forward as best we can. But um, if you don't have cohesion within your ecosystem, somebody has to die. And unfortunately we don't have the, uh, we're not running a tournament series, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have a income five times a year. We have to rely that hopefully all at least 10 pro teams purchase our product and um and individuals like you guys share and support us in whatever manner you possibly can mm -hmm. pat how much is the product for for one of the pro teams to purchase for the weekend uh they need to dm our uh, instagram account 
or they can email us at paintball.stats at gmail.com. All right. I'm not, I'm not allowed to know on the air? No. <laughs> so well, am I not allowed to talk about it when I pay for it? Uh, yeah, we have so we have a contract that we sign. Um, there's some there's a lot of really cool stuff, Marcella. You get in the background that I'm, I'm that, DMing uh, you right out. now. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. <laughs> I, know I know you are. Uh, how much? And what do I get? <laughs> <laughs> um, in all seriousness, like if that's you know if if it's supposed to be confidential, that's fine. But I am very interested. Um, again, it's a very reasonable. Is, it's a very very reasonable price. It's so how Sam and I came up with the figure, right? Um, and honestly, we have a uh, we have a checks and balance system. Um, so when it comes to sports metrics, just just to give credit, uh, Ryan Moorhead is the person that determines if me and Sam are doing something stupid, because Ryan argues about everything. If you've spent five minutes with him, you'll know that. <laughs> um, so if 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 Moorhead gives us the the nod, then we feel like we've hit the right thing. And then when it comes to uh, like information put out or business sense, uh, my wife Lindsay's in charge. Me and Sam have to get all our Instagram posts and everything approved for her through her. And, and the reason we do that actually is we want somebody that understands the game just enough where they're just the average consumer and they can look at it and be able to take that information in and be able to have a conversation back. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when it comes to the uh, pricing and stuff like that, Marcelo, it's cheaper to fly. It's cheaper to use our product than to fly somebody in, put them in a hotel, split the rental car, feed them. And potentially have to pay them. Okay, oh, absolutely. so it's between five hundred and a thousand dollars, maybe. <laughs> Speculation. All right. Speculation. Yeah. Speculation. Alleged. It, um, it's very yeah. reasonable. And Marcel, you are you are right on the dot. So there you go. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Well, if I know um, anything about all the people involved in paintball, um, Tommy, everyone that's running NXL, ML, PB, everyone wants to see this thing do well, and. Like I said, if there's any way that you guys have a creative way that can drive revenue your way and we can help, you know, drive that information out to people and help sustain this, we want to see paintball stats do well. It, it's mm -hmm. it's in the best interest of the game and the sport as a whole to have this type of information. So uh, I just want to put that out there and say that, you know, we're, we're rooting for the whole thing and, and want to make sure that this thing pushes forward into the future. And we got to get creative too. I mean, that's really what it comes down to is, is staying creative and, and continuing to push new boundaries and find ways to make sure that it's a sustainable thing for you guys, you know? It's not just sustainable for us, right? So like, I, I want to make that very clear. It's sustainable for the industry. Like this is something that we need. We all want, not just as professionals, but as information that we can provide to the public. So like, if we can't find a way to make it work, you know, then, then we're failing as an industry. Because if we fail, just like PB Access failed and other people that have tried this have failed, right? Then we're not doing our job. And that's what we really got to do. We got to get to a point where we all can contribute in a, in a manner. And it's not the uh, the cost that we're talking about. Like uh, uh, Ty knows, like I do other stuff outside of paintball. Um, my life is very happy. I'm never going to get rich in paintball. I, uh, I, wanted, I want to make something sustainable that this can be here forever. And maybe one day we'll get lucky. And Tom will package this all up into some big giant TV deal and we'll all finally get paid what we actually deserve. Uh, we might be in our uh, late 40s or 50s by the time we get there. But uh, the way you guys stay in shape, I have full confidence that we'll still be here. I don't don't know if Greenspan will make it into his 60s, but we'll try. To get it, <laughs> don't know? doubt him. Don't doubt him. I I'm not. Like, I'm not. I feel like he might outlast me. <laughs> uh, you know, the beautiful thing is we'll have PTG here still, and we're all, we're going to be able to 100%. talk about the amazing stats you guys have with the awesome up and coming players and superstars of the game at that time. So it's yeah. a win either way. It is. It is. Yeah. So. And that's one of those fun ones for me, like, cause I sitting there and going through and putting through all the numbers of who did what and everything. And like looking at guys that like, I mean, their story is not told. And like you're looking at him and you know, Daniel camp, like, yeah, that was, Epic. Awesome. And I think we all knew like he was playing lights out and he's been, it, it's kind of like back in the day, nobody ever talked about Brian Smith, but all the pros know. Oh, yeah. Brian Smith. Right? <laughs> it mm -hmm. was just one of those things. And that's kind of like, we all know who Daniel camp is, but it's like, he is not one of the players that his store is told as much as it probably should be. And it's mm -hmm. being able to put the numbers to their performance makes a lot of people 
pay attention just that much more to these individuals. Absolutely. It's just especially guys that don't have their name touted as much. If you are playing the no, well, the the numbers will follow, and it can't be denied. Then it can't be this just eyeball test where guys are like that guy's awesome. It's like, yeah, well, if you talk to a lot of the other teams, they're actually looking at this other guy on his team because you don't really know what you're looking at. And so now we can actually put a little bit more value behind these guys' names, and it feels like they're actually being promoted. And that's why I was like, when I was doing everything, I didn't know who was getting it up at first. I was literally just putting everything in. And I wouldn't even put in the actual like ranked numbers. I was just putting in their ratings and I was just doing it full teams at a time. And then all of a sudden I was like, huh, huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It was just because I was doing it just to get it all together, get everybody done, make sure everything was where it should be. And also I was like, Oh, there you go. There's Daniel camp. Are you guys willing to share like what percentage each category um, it does for the overall player rating? Like I, I remember back in the day, paintball access had taught, and I don't remember what the numbers were, but it was something that they kind of shared so that you understood how you arrived at these, these numbers. Uh, unfortunately, if we do that, then somebody, since it's not a proprietary thing, once it's released like that, somebody could just recreate it. That's the one hard part is that. Yeah, we're trying to, where we are working on that, Marcelo. So we are, uh, Sam is, we have, uh, we do have an attorney on staff um, through, uh, through my wife's businesses that they, they own a firm, but we are working on getting that handled so that we're able to release that and have that data out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Once. Once that's protected, and it just basically says you can't, you can't copy this exactly. Mm -hmm. We'll let everybody know because then they'll understand. It's like, but it's everything's done to give a value in which things like the amount of points you played and your win percentage are going to be ranked higher than things like how many bunkers you played off the break, and it's to give you in which something like you versus Daniel Camp head to head, he played more of the percentage of points for his team. So he's going to get a slight bump. He played more spots on the field. He's going to get a slight bump. And then you guys ended up playing each other in the finals. So you guys each had a lot of wins throughout the event as matches. So things like matches we put into things due to the fact that Dynasty only had to play seven games. Well, other teams had to play wildcard games. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to sit there and come up with a way to make that reasonable because say a wildcard team went to the finals. Right. Yeah. Do they get, how, how does that work? Do you, is there something that kind of knocks that down? Yeah, or? There's just, there's just a metric yeah. in order to kind of keep that. So then people aren't getting way more value right? because right. technically they weren't as good. <laughs> no, that's a tough, I, the, I could argue both sides of that, right? It's in the preliminary yeah. rounds. Like yeah, yeah. You didn't do enough to get the buy. You could have a really tough bracket. Absolutely. In which that's stuff like where you know we're going to be releasing strength of schedule, mm, in which I like that you can kind of see which we'll be putting out. We've already shown we've you know we did it with uh, the guys from the coaches show and showed you know technically based off of ratings and how teams performed, Russian Legion's next event they have the easiest strength of schedule. So going into the event, we're going to make a post showing those and just saying, you know, these are what the strength of schedules look like going into Dallas, which is something that's never been talked about in paintball. It's like, we all look at it and go, that's the bracket of death. But it's like, is it? Mm -hmm. who, who says? Is it yeah, and off anything? Or is it just we go, that's a team name and they're good. Yeah. Can you kind of speak on how you're, how you're uh, curating these um types of metrics so that people can kind of understand what that means, like the uh, strength of schedule and, and what it entails. 
it's pretty close to the NFL. The NFL does it off wins and losses, and we've added in more metrics using our ratings of individual players mm-hmm. because that's your roster. That's who you have to pick from to put on the yeah. field. <laughs> so we're using things like that. So then people, it's not just like, well, dynasty, you guys, wow, that's just cool. Automatically, yeah. which you guys are, do have the highest point value in the strength schedule, but it's because you guys won, you guys won a lot of matches with a lot of points. So of course you guys are going to have the, the highest strength r- score. But then as you go down, you see other teams that, you know, barely made Sunday. And then they started to win some games on Sunday. And so it's like, where do they actually stack up as individual players with their survivability and their actual win percentages? So you take the actual players into account as the whole team, because there's only five, there's going to be five guys on the field from that roster. So they should be equated for not just the wins and losses. Yeah, I, I really like that. I think that's a, a very cool um, way to do it. Yeah, that's totally makes and a sense. A lot of the stuff how you would you'd asked about, you know, why is our system have a different win percentage than the NXLs? And it's not to say that we're mean, but a no point. Say time runs out, anything. We don't care. You had the opportunity to win and there wasn't a win. There's no ties in life. We are not going to give you a boost when the opportunity was there. The opportunity was because guess what? If that other team was running down and scored that point, they would have, they got a point. You held the clock out. Great. But you did not win the point and they didn't either, but we keep it as a baseline to say there is no winner in this point. And it's no winner, no loser, no plus, no minus. Well, we take it on as losers currently, strictly because if you played, you've played ten man, a tie is a loss, and that's so. Just, so if you're alive, if you're a lot, so what if you're, you know, so you could kind of get dinged if you're up points in a match. Say it's five to three with thirty seconds to go, we get a negative. That so doesn't make sense. You get all your other stats. You're alive. Yeah. Right. All of that still goes into it. You just don't get the win. Yep. Yeah. But you my job get the win. So you get it. And realistically, it almost evens out as a negative when you go into all the things added together. But that singular number is going to show slightly lower. But the difference is it also goes like that across the board. So it's all even across the board for this. It's well, not like. An yes individual. and no, though, because what if you have a team that is constantly protecting a lead then those players are kind of getting penalized for that right like if we're constantly up five three five two and you know we're at the end of a match and and i'm on the field and my job is not to win the point my job is to let the time expire there's a a slight ding on that that's kind of a bummer ever so slightly in which we are working on a new user interface and it will take those into account okay sweet and actually be adding those as well as more things to give an even better overall. But I keep on preaching is there was no baseline for any of this. Oh, dude, and Sam, so let me, Oh yeah. Yeah. We're let me make trying to get that going. Yeah. Let me, let me make it clear. I fully support and all on board and it's going to take a long time of, you know, evolving and, you know, Tyler and I were out of the WC. You were there as well. We had our booth and we're like, dude, we're divisional players again, right? Like we're, we're completely starting over. We're D three at best. You know, we're going to try to work our way up through the ranks, but this is the same thing. This venture for you guys with stats, it's, it's, you know, maybe not Pat, Pat's been doing it a little longer, you know, with data input and stuff, but still, this is a relatively new thing it's going to be a constant progression of of getting better, right? So the foundation you guys already have is awesome, truly, really is. And if we can continue to get better and better, that's even better. Um, Another question I had, say, um, say you have, say Tyler goes through and you guys stomp everybody, 6-0, 6-0, 6-0, 6-0, all the way uh, to the finals. And then, our team goes and we win one zero one zero one zero one zero all the way to the finals. Up until that point, who would be ranked higher? The team that played more points, or yeah, 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 because okay. more tables being played. And okay. uh, Marcel, to jump back to your question before, 
Um, you talk about getting dinged. If you're in the NFL and you're winning a game and you just take knees, you're still taking snaps. To run yeah, the clock. Abs- a- absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. You're you still, even lose still, yardage. You lose yardage. That's right. You know? That's right. So yeah. you're getting negative there too. So there's no – like being a defensive player is, uh, is a noble thing. Um, but I mean, you're going to get the win overall, which is going to give you more points at, at the end of it. That's why it washes out. So, um, that's just something way to look at it for, uh, you know, people listening to this is that, yeah. you know, taking, no, taking snaps and, and putting it down. I mean, that's just part, part of the of game. Mm. That's yeah. It's really hard with, uh, like when we talk about like the QBR, it's like to get a perfect score, even in the NFL is literally impossible yeah in ours so is impossible. You, guys, you guys are gonna have a lot of players playing some reckless paintball now which is gonna make for some exciting go sports content so look what you did you guys are speeding the game up this is all that they had to do the whole time you know i'm gonna be like skinny I'm, i can't play the back center this one i played it four points in a row i gotta go to the cali i gotta go to the corner hey skinny i'm going snake on the break uh oh we're up a point 30 seconds ago i'm going i'm going for <laughs> but it, all, it, it adds that layer and the one thing that it also adds is now guys are actually going to be looking at it and being like, well, well, did I really do that? And you'd be surprised. We've all played with players that come off the field and they're like, no, this is what happened. And they're all like, dude, we we're on the sidelines. We saw what happened. They're like, nope. And you're like, I don't know to tell you, man. I think and majority like, of paintball players do have done that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, but we can actually sit there and be like, this is how much you live. <laughs> yeah. We got to work on this, man. And so being able to actually quantify that stuff, I do think for the coaches, and it's, you know, with we created the war, like a war rating. And plus minus tells some stuff. But with the war rating, it's, you know, it's very similar to baseball and football and hockey, in which we are looking at individual points. And we are saying, which I was doing, Pat always yells at me, he's like, stay focused. And I start <laughs> messing with it. And I was looking at the averages within teams of where a player needs to be in a war rating in order to be effective for them. And it came out to be anything over a 0.39 usually puts you in the top five guys of any roster. If you just average things out and you have to take off certain percentiles to say, here's the highest, here's the lowest. Those are kind of have to be muted just because some of those are so far out there. But if you take the, the meat of it, 0.39 is where a player needs to be. And if a guy's negative on your team and I'm looking at some of these teams going, they keep on putting this dude out there and he is losing them points. And because nobody's using true metrics, these dudes are getting spins. And I'm like, okay, like if that's how teams are going to play it, cool. But then you look at the other teams as Sunday goes on, you don't really see that. You, It is pretty straight across the board. These guys, and it, it is, it's anything at the top level, the top guys kind of have a feeling, no, they can eyeball it and know where guys are kind of at. But you start seeing the differences in these players and be able to say, this guy's losing us points. And it's hard because, you know, as a player, you don't like seeing that when somebody's like, Hey man, here's the numbers. This is what you've been doing to us. Like it's hard pill to swallow, but as an industry, like we need this stuff. It's every sport does it. Every sport does it. And it's, you know, we're trying to get, the baseline for that. So then we can all start taking this to another level with this stuff. Absolutely. And no matter what, you know, as a player individually, as your collective team, when you're going to bat and you're making it happen for your team and, and when things are falling into place, everyone's playing good. You can feel that. And it shows in the metrics and vice versa. If you're getting hit early or losing a lot of battles and and all these problems are having that's going to show in the metrics as well and it would be cool if because i'm sure pat has stats from years and years to kind of start to drive all these stats from the past as well and see you know what led to the current iteration of today Uh, because there's so much numbers like i said that we haven't even tapped into from the past couple years or, or however long that you have them of like just simple things like uh team matchups 
and like knowing percentages on those kind of things. There's a lot of really valuable insights that we can draw from simple details like that. So yeah, we have, so that's what Sam gets into. And that's what he'll call me in the middle of the night because he has access to my full drive now and it goes all the way back to 2015. Yeah. Um, so every NXL tournament since 2015, I think I only missed one since then. Um, and um, talking about team matchups, that's actually Tyler. One of the things I'm against uh, between uh, it's hard without having uh, individual player ratings. That's what mm -hmm. Sam added in because think about this on a 40 man baseball roster. How many people turn over? Yeah, about, about it's about thirty percent a season. It's what it's what you turn over. Start from from uh, signing the roster to cutting to trading through the year. Imagine if thirty percent of our average teams turned over. We've got we average about nine players on a team. So you talk about thirty percent, like you're you're almost into the starting lineup, mm -hmm. and that's the problem with just doing historically what team is going to be better, because mm -hmm. trade value is so great, and it's not compensated back in the past. I think by the end of this season, going into next year, we'll be able to have a legitimate um, uh, strength rating for the entire year, where we'll be able to enter the season knowing what people are going to do. So when when we so when you know Dynasty trades Marcelo away, right, um, for some random kid, then that when that random kid comes in, he'll have a rating, and that new team that took Marcelo will then have what they have. They'll his his rating will be put into their thing, which theoretically should make their team better. Interesting. Man, that's cool. How and many to do that with the rating? You can you can name the team whatever you want. If we had these ratings way before, we would have been able to put a value on Aftershock. But totally. We yeah, don't we have, have anything. Right. Which and, helps for like the Kirgo sports betting, right? For that very yep. first event. Like, you know, how did they even come up with the odds of how Aftershock was going to do? There's nothing to go off of. No and that's just it is I took all it's funny because then Pat again tells me stay focused and I took all the ratings and I started going through the rosters and putting based off these values, the wins, losses, and only using one event sample size, creating betting lines. But it's based off actual player performances yeah. instead of just, oh, they'll win 70% of the time. There you go. Yeah. That based on? <laughs> that's funny. All right. So let's talk about the asterisk players. Um, in the paintball stats lineup, there's how many total pro players? Is it over 200 in the NXL well, or is it? The, there's 18 asterisk players and then 156, um, uh, players that got accounted for. Okay. So it's below 200. All right. Um, well, there's other two. players on rosters. So like Charlie with the NL Kings, he was on the roster. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the guy suited up. So like, these are just guys that stepped that on the field, the field. Even if it was one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all we like, care about. Ryan Smith, our, our coach, right? He didn't, he's, he's ro He was a rostered player. He was not on staff last event. He was rostered. Yeah. He I mean, get that man on the field. Ryan's a beast. The dude eats every time he plays. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> anyway, okay. So Ty, what would you like to talk about the asterisk? Uh, just more information in regards to it and what it means and, and like what it entails. So you've kind of, um, kind of cleared it up there. It's just uh, a person that maybe didn't play as many points as everyone else or didn't see the field quite as much. Is that right? So yes, I you go and take that. went through and I literally, I have a singular file that is every single team and all their players. And I went through and basically took, went through and saw roughly if you played more than six points, it usually six points in it. If you weren't over 16% of your team's points and you did not meet those two criteria, you really didn't affect the outcome for your team because a lot of these guys that were getting to about six or just under 16, they were getting usually those points of like, Hey, just run down and hope, see what happens or just hold it out. And the one of the players I kept using for people to kind of grasp was Harrison Fry because Fry played five points. Well, he only played 9.2% of the team's points. And I, if you would have put him in there, he would have been up there with some of the big name players. He would have been above 
you know, put him in. Hold on, Nick Laval, right Jackson yeah. Fry, Thomas Taylor, and Rainey. He'd have been above Rainey. Is it fair for a guy that played five points based off him accumulating points because of the overall team's performance to be put in with everybody else? And it's really hard to get, say that that's accurate. So looking at it, six points and 16% really was right the line that kind of stuck out as I sat there and went through everything. And it was, you know, to us, it's nothing against those guys. It just, it's not enough to truly equate to what they did in the game for five points for a team like Dynasty that played seven matches. That doesn't tell much. You guys played 54 points. Is five points really enough? to really put him over these other players for points that really aren't points that are always ones. They're, they're not points that you're really like, we're going to fall. Like this is, we have to have this point. Those guys don't get those. It, these usually aren't starter points and stuff like that. And it's nothing against them. But if we put that in there, it doesn't tell an accurate story of the event. Mm-hmm. Does the the metric of like the percentage of of your team's points not weigh it down enough? That's what you guys are saying. Like it would yes. still put a put those players above other. And I, you bring up Rainey. To me, Rainey's one of the best players really of, of all time. I mean, he's he's phenomenal. Absolutely. But their their team had a really bad event. So you know maybe that wasn't the best analogy. But um, well, the analogy is on playing, right? So Harrison played. I'm looking at all their stats right now. Harrison played five points. He only won one of the five points he was in, and he only survived two times. If you go over to Rainey, just give me a second, I'll click. Yeah, but it. so would that not – that wouldn't show itself without the asterisks? Uh, I mean, it's, no. It, it's, yeah, because and you guys, you get overall team matching. Yeah. Okay. The team's it, winning matches, it. accumulating points. And again, the why having all the matches in there matters is because you guys won – every one of your games mm -hmm. that should so the be points a one in those games are more valuable. And yeah. not only that is that matches played matters because again, stuff like wild card matches, stuff like you can lose two games in the prelims and then still move on. But it's not an accurate story for that just to be even because you guys did have trials and tribulations that had to be equated for and it's not a major part of things but it needed to be equated for to be as accurate as you can of what happened at this event sure no i i like it i i really do you know i always thought i think it was when my fan wagon was doing it there'd be players that would have a, a really high score and it's like i what was their metric it was like kill death ratio Yes. Something like yeah. that. Right. And it would be, so they would have like a really high KD, but they only played like seven points, you know? And, and so they had like 10 kills and, and it looked really good, mm -hmm. but that's not fair to the player that had 40 points, 41 kills, you know, won the event, you know, but, but right. had a, a lower rating, I guess. Exactly. And, and that's, and that's why we're using rainy because rainy played 17 points of his teams math all other points that's 70 percent of them and yeah. then he won seven of those points that he played i mean so they're going to get ranked him and um harrison are about the same they're 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 uh they're tied almost mm -hmm. yeah that harrison post got got snatched down huh where'd that thing go <laughs> oh here oh, harris the oh, sorry, yeah. Harris. Harris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was great. Sam, I, that was a good idea Sam had. It was awesome. Harris was all about it. Um, unfortunately, the ML Kings, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of got onto them. I've got onto Kyle. They provided us the photo because we do ask for photos from the players, right? Mm -hmm. We asked where you got it so we could tag those people. And unfortunately, um, that photo was taken via screenshot from a videographer that did not give them permission. And they reached out to us. We, me and Sam spoke to them individually. Um, we couldn't work anything out. We understand their position. Um, and I actually agree with what the individual was saying. 
um, and we took it down out of a courtesy to them. But it will yeah. go back up once we got a picture of Harris somewhere. He was totally <laughs> good about it. Um, we are going to continue to do that. Whoever is the last qualifying person will be Mr. Irrelevant at every event. <laughs> Damn, that's cold-hearted. <laughs> it's also one of the Put fun it on things. on the books. I will never win that barrel. <laughs> we'll have – because, I mean, this is also historical data. We're going to be able to have somebody at the end of the season. Oh, that that's a good spot. Oh, no. And it's nothing that. out of malice, but, hey, man, we're telling a story here, and yeah. know, Dude. somebody's going to be there. Sam, you know what I think about everyone here? You know what I think about often? Because I watch a lot of sports stuff. I watch a lot of ESPN, you know, Stephen A. Smith, different commentators. They are vicious. If someone, if a superstar has a bad game, the way they, like, break them down, paintball players aren't ready for that, you know? But that means that we've made it to the next level. When every single move you make on the field is highly scrutinized, right or wrong, to be honest, you know? Uh, it, it's all about the the conversation of it that's what keeps people you know engaged and entertained but it is absolutely brutal how they treat these athletes you know you look at basketball it, across all major sports you see these shows and it's brutal but it's entertaining it keeps people highly engaged that's why Stephen a smith uh-oh something's going down over there yeah, <laughs> is that <man>. you say <laughs> it's damn not me you in the hood Could or be. what bro yeah no i live probably about six blocks from a hospital oh, oh yeah man. every once in a while they'll come through yeah i'm surprised there's not more goodness well hope that person's all right but yeah that's um, marshall you brought up a great point right that's espn used to be a sports network and now it's a sports opinion network and that's really what we're missing in in paintball um i know i said this earlier in the other show i may have said it already today um in this one but that's the big piece that we need. We need to be able to have these conversations yes. about who the best really is. You know, like, did we get it right? Are are you number two or you should you be number one? Um, you know, I think Tyler was like 17. Is, was Tyler placed correctly? Or did we need to like, is, or do we do him wrong? 18, Tyler, sorry. Um, but that's, that's the thing. And Sam's, I think, at like 20 something, 23. Those are the conversations that I want I want people to have. And this mm -hmm. is going to generate, in my opinion, the opportunity for people to argue about it. You know, do you guys, when you're the first seed overall in the NXL, you always play afternoon games. So does that, is that matter? I hate those games. Going in, I, that's right. So like, that's the conversation, <laughs> right? Is do, Can Dynasty win in the morning? You oh. know, is your guys run based on you guys being successful in the afternoon? Cause you mostly make it out of the, the wild card. Right. So you're always playing in the, the, the second or third quarter final or the second or fourth, second or third set of the day, you know, and then you always play your finals at the end of the day. Can you guys win in the morning if you had to show up at 7 a.m.? But that's a question that we, we may not ever know, but we can debate it based on the information that we have. And the last stat that, uh, that Sam and I want to add, but we keep um, Lindsay is really stopping us on this because it's going to cause anarchy within the league um, is of giving people credit for hitting the buzzer. Dude, I mean, I've talked about this for a long time and maybe I'm being a little selfish or biased, but that's the only way you can actually, well, it's not the only way. It's one of the only ways that you can actually score a point. You have to hit the buzzer. Someone has to hit yeah. the buzzer or a major has to happen with, you know, not enough bodies. That's right. Or and a I'm, concession. I, so three, so three I, ways. I'm yeah. One? And that's, yep. Yeah. And I'm, and I, that's where I'm kind of torn, right? Because as a coach, I want you guys to look at each other before you guys go and touch that little thing. But as uh, as a fan and somebody that wants to see action, I would love for Tyler to shoot the last guy and just see an all out sprint from five dudes to try to get to this this buzzer <laughs> to get credit for it. That's I mean, that's what I want to see as a fan. But that brings back in your same argument. Like, yeah, you might not get the buzzer, but you're doing the right thing to win the game. It's like, that's right. you know, uh, Miko Hardman, I think that's who it was in the Super Bowl, you know, taking a knee right at the, was it Miko Hardman? Maybe it was last, yeah, it was, it was yeah, last year. But yeah, you know, he had a he, his first appearance in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl win, has a wide open touchdown. It's towards the end of the game. And he slides at the one yard line so they could burn the clock rather than yeah, running right. it in, you know? Um, yeah. I think that, and then I actually wanted to ask about penalties. Are penalties taken into account in this? Uh, going forward, they will be. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, huge. So, yeah, we have, um, so I know Sam mentioned, we have a new UI that was developed by our team. 
Um, and it, it definitely uh, it accounts for penalties. Now, not only does it account for penalties, but also accounts who gets pulled on the penalty. So if you're somebody that's a penalty magnet, like you're the guy who gets pulled, not the one that receives it, you're actually going to get credited for that too. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Credited in – so if Tyler gets a you're, penalty a, and I get pulled on it, I get a ding? And get a negative? No, so you're gonna you. It won't be. It won't be counted. It'll be a. Um, Sam's still working on the formula. We're all kind oh, of at the back end. It's but like it'll be like kind of like a wash like a, or like something. A, it'll be like a like instead of being like so let's just say the metric for dying is one, right? Then it, it'll be like a 0. 0.75 or a 0. 0.5 or something. Um, oh, man, so you won't that, get as dinged as much. <laughs> that really sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like. It's one, yeah, I'm trying to try think, to pick like, better, pick better teammates, Marcelo. Like, I don't have to worry about that over here. Like, we got good dudes. Also think of, think of football for sacks. For sacks, like, there's a lot of times that guy got there first, but another guy helped him take it down. So you both get a half sack. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, that's again, different though, because you still have a piece in it. Like, I literally have nothing to do with any of my teammates cheating on the field. Nothing. So there is one thing I've been teammates. saying about how I look at it is if your team wins the point. I would prefer that you get credited with the survival strictly because you were your teammate took away the opportunity for you. But I'm the only reason I'm like unsure about that is because we cannot guarantee you would have lived. 100%. So I think it should go in that direction. And I'm spitballing here. You guys have probably spent way more time than, well, I know you guys have spent way more time thinking about this than I have in this metric for sure. But if your team wins the point, why not have that be where you get the 0.5 rather than the one point, you know? And the if it goes the other way, you find a way to really mitigate that ding. I definitely don't think it should be like 0.75, maybe 0.25, you know, if anything. I just, I think there should be a way where you don't get dinged at all. That, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that just, would be wild. That's, that's one yeah. of the fun things. Yeah. Where it's, yeah. This is, these are the debates. Yeah, yeah, for we're sure. We're eligible to have now if once you start putting numbers to mm -hmm. scenarios. And yeah. right now we don't have great ones to go based off of. And I, the NXL, you know, had their stats there. And we've taken – what we have and there's a lot of information to go through and again theirs the ties weren't counted in ours there was what's what's the real path you should go there's real really no answer because everybody's going to have a difference of opinion of how you should count these things but it's what do we accept as the kind of the baseline for the industry to accept as this is what we go with. This is the direction we want to go. And that we feel this tells does which one tells the better story of accuracy of the players. And it's, that's why I go to Moorhead for a lot of things. And it's just, cause I look at him and go, do you, how do you feel about this? And I know he's going to have an opinion and we can actually have a long conversation about like, what degree of accuracy of the story is it telling? It doesn't have to be like, because we don't have the money in this industry to make these metrics like the NFL. We have to start somewhere. So right now, let's get it as digestible as possible. Okay. Well, unfortunately, our view is you had the opportunity to win and you didn't get it. So that's going over here. Oh, okay. Well, makes it easy for now to understand. Well, when we change it, we'll tell you and we'll tell you the reasoning and how it goes in. But for now, to make it digestible, keep it simple. Keep it simple. I like that. I do got to give you guys a little bit of flack on something that I noticed when you released uh, Kirill's stats. Mm -hmm. You guys somehow missed how many times he went to that pin. So the so, pin was considered part of the center structure. We just didn't highlight it. And we and, and honestly, we had so much traction on that post at that point. There was no reason to pull it no down. Reason to take it over. down. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was like, how did they miss that one? The pin yeah. was like, because it was also that was like a, a thing in that event that was so different. Nobody else did it. And it was so yeah. effective. And it was like just your typical Russian Legion play calling. Right. Like all of a sudden they're doing something. Everyone in practice is like this pin's dumb. 
you know, and then all of a sudden you're at the event and Kirill's in the pin trapping two bodies in the back center. And you're like, where's this coming from? You know, sure enough, he's in there. Yeah. So that was going to be considered part of the center structure. Um, but we, uh, we just didn't highlight it. It was a error on but, our part. Yeah, no, it's all so, good. I'm just giving you a hard but, time again. Yeah. guys. I love what you're doing. There's going to be, there's going to be bumps in the road along the way. You're not, if anybody expects, you know, pro players, people are, are, are sending me messages about it. If we expect this thing to be perfect early on, I mean, we're just not being realistic. The fact that we have something, everybody should be incredibly appreciative over. You guys are making the sacrifice to put this together. It's not an easy feat by any means. It's a financial obligation and a huge time obligation. I, I can't imagine how much time you guys have put into really honing in on all these metrics and providing all this data, curating the post, everything. So um, it, it's going to be a road of, you know, continuously getting better and evolving. And um, we're fortunate that you guys are providing this for us. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're lucky that we had, you know, almost nine years of running the program before we actually release it to the public. Yeah. And then I was, I'm very fortunate that I have a staff around me and I have Sam who's obsessed with fantasy and just can start creating stuff and it makes it so much easier. Um, we have a lot of people who love paintball. They want to be involved. They want to take paintball to the next level. And we all believe this is part of that next level. Yeah. What is the vision for paintball stats moving into the future? Um, obviously, you know, this is the early stages, but what is the, what is the next year to three years look like for your guys's vision board? So, I mean, uh, first thing is we want to make it sustainable. That's like our main goal right now. We're seeing is there sustainability within the industry to support this or with outside people to make it happen. Once we get to there, um, we would like to have a, uh, I know Sam's very in this private off topic conver or off camera conversation, but you know, we definitely want to do something with fantasy, right? We know you guys, uh, currently control that. Um, so we'd want to do something there. I think that's the next big one. I know, um, we are getting ready to launch a website. Uh, we wanted to have it ready for this show. Unfortunately, we just didn't have the time. Um, but we will have a website that has a ranking system with all the players in the league, including the Asterix players. You'll be able to see everybody, see their rankings um, based on the information that we are collecting. And that'll be out there hopefully in the next week or two now. Um, probably awesome. after the event, honestly, because it just, it's, it's go time. You know, we're all going, you know, yeah. today's like our last day off, right? <laughs> For all of us. Um, we all, we all officially go to work tomorrow. No days um, off, baby. No days off. But uh, so do you have the domain name that you could share where people can kind of get acclimated to it um, and start to be, you know, ready to go on that website? Sam, do you want to share it? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember it. Off the I know what it is. Head. I know what it is. Yeah. You're, good, you're good for me I mean, to tell them? Paintball-stats.com. Pro. Uh, pro. No, it's not. It's uh, we have uh, pro paintball stats.com. Nice. There we go. It's a great name. Yeah, and it's really exciting what you guys are doing, man. We do have some questions in the Discord, so we'll sound off on a couple of those. Um, March, do you have one pulled up? You want me to find one here? I let's go with uh, let's go with I Papa Sash. Shout out I to Papa. Like I, Papa I feel like I cheat on those because I can read them. <laughs> for show. sure. I was hey, that's like good reading though. them. Then you're prepped. I was like I was telling Sam. Me and Sam are prepped for this. Nice. There we go. There yeah, go. and uh, shout out to Moorhead too. He's in the Discord. And if you guys ever want to like run data points and get like feedback from the public, we would love to have questions asked or with ratings or maybe you know the way that uh, the weighting systems. If there's any polls that you ever want to take, we have a great community in there. So Papa Sash is wondering: Will paintball stats include a swag rating and or style points? Sam would be just nuclear on this. I mean, if you if you're not on the YouTube, please do yourself a favor and head over and check out my boy's outfit right now. <laughs> I'm got, preparing for Dallas. You know, we're getting ready for Texas. Yeah. I figured, you know, <laughs> getting the mindset early. Tooted and booted. Let's go. But they um, last time, you know, we did something. Pat had to wear a button up, so I figured it's my turn to do it. Um, <laughs> but if I, you know, if we we're able to uh, get. I got to get with my scientist and my team of yeah. uh, Sir Dizon and really uh, see how he feels the swag rating uh, can be yep. formulated. He would be my uh, swag yeah. liaison <laughs> as I kind of just pick up whatever is next to me and say that that works. Uh, find me in a Goodwill Hawaiian or uh, <laughs> some cutoff I found at a gas station regularly. So I wouldn't be the best person for that. 
Probably, I'd probably say Ro- Ronnie and Todd would probably be the best two guys mm-hmm. to run that. <laughs> yep, swagged out. Yeah, the uh, Papa Sash. We'll see you this weekend. We're going out to uh, to play at X Factor Paintball Park, so we can't wait to see you out there. <clears throat> yeah. All right. We got Elams he wants to know Pat. Did paintball stats come from coaching, scouting opposition? If so, when did you when did you decide that this info would be good for the league versus keeping this info for the team to use? Yeah, so this started in 2015. Um, I was taking like physical stats and then I actually used to carry a printer around to all the events in the rental car and I would print them off for damage and then give them physical reports. Um, In 2016, 2017, I switched over to a Surface laptop and started collecting the data there. Um, And then, like I said, uh, I didn't think I was going to coach this year. I thought I was just going to kind of hang out and be a fan. And I was throwing around this idea of doing this and I, uh, me and Sam were talking, I think I had like an order coming to the shop and I was like, Hey, I'm going to do this. And Sam's like, well, let me see what you got. And that's really where it really evolved from there. Um, I had like, I think the Instagram was like two days old when I told Sam what I was doing. And, uh, Sam's like, Hey, I've got this idea. Let me throw this image together for you of, of who you're going to do. And I'm like, I'm do Jason Edwards. And he threw the image together, of Jason. And we showed Jason, we showed, I, I think I showed it to Tyler and a few other people and people were like, yeah, you have to do this. And that's kind of where it happened. We just wanted that information that's been hidden, uh, like what's going on. Because I'm not the only coach that does it. SK has his version. Joey has a version. The Hurricanes guys have versions. Um, Mike from Revo has his own version. Like everybody's kind of doing the same thing. I just thought it would be cool to give it out and let the public start consuming that. Hmm. Yeah. And then actually Sam showed me some really cool stuff that's like futuristic, possibly, you know, maybe 10 years down the line where we're incorporating the technology, which is going to be maybe more readily accessible at that time with AI mm-hmm. and these different types of ways of implementing cameras to gather data and then be able to to apply that like instantaneously. So excited for, you know, what the future holds with all of this stuff. Uh, CB2K, part of the macro line gang. We have a whole thread in the discord that's just people who shoot yeah. macro line. So shout out to you. <laughs> Did you guys test these stats out internally with Houston Heat? If so, did it affect play calls, line decisions, any of that kind of stuff? Um, so internally, we um, Heat use this. Bird has all this information. Um, I would never speculate on what Bird uses or doesn't use. Um, it's it's his call. I think he does a phenomenal job. So uh, he does. He has it. He has access to it. We discuss it a lot, but um, I think Bird knows what he's doing. And um, luckily, we have a great group of guys around us that make it make that job extremely easy. Yeah, it's been a treat being able to get coached by bird obviously playing alongside him for the years that i've been on the team and i always loved his coaching style watching him when i was on dynasty and uh, it is a pleasure to be able to see him work because he is a master at the craft of just being such a sponge to everyone's energy and information um, when we come kind of off the field or when he's prepping for a point he's been really a uh, master class at showing is that coaching power man so shout out to bird man and I think we have a couple more questions. Yeah, I've got my last question here from Patty Rice. who wants to know, Sam and Pat, what are what are things you would want to find a way to quantify in a stat but have a hard time finding or placing a metric to? For example, percentage of times escaped versus trapped in the pocket, almost like a time of possession stat. Sam, you take that because you're obsessed with the time clock thing. I'm obsessed with the time. Um, time on the field, like – time alive so tyler was there uh at practice day one i asked can we record the time of every single point Mm -hmm. so going into the event we knew roughly if you scored five points in a match you you probably won it and what was the final score of the finals five to four if you run enough practice points you can kind of see how roughly how an event might come close to breaking down and start getting an idea of like, man, if this is a minute and 30 second point and we lose this one, this is going to chip away at our opportunity to get quick like points back because points don't, you know, we, there's not much time. So it takes this long to win a point. So time alive is big for me because it's something that somebody like you, Marcelo, your time alive is going to be way up there. And so when you start then breaking it down positionally and start to where if it's a two minute point on average and your snake eyes only staying alive for 30 seconds, but we find out that one minute is roughly about the time if they die in about one minute, 
that's where they're most effective, you realize they're doing too much too early. So how does the game and ebbs and flows of the game actually work on a specific field layout? And I think time alive is big. Yeah. I love that one. Let's get it going. <laughs> I, I just think it's something that is very, uh, you know, you talk about quarterbacks in the pocket and how long it takes for him to release. Why are we yeah. not talking about how long a snake guy, you know, maybe he can't work his way in right away. So if he's dying in the first 30 seconds, but he lives a minute and 10 seconds, he usually, his team wins the point more often than not. Yeah. And we start looking at these and these are the metrics other sports use. Mm -hmm. These are the things they look at. And it's just, as we get further along and being able to collect that and then find a way to actually digest it and make it useful. Mm. And we have, we had just so you guys know, we have weekly meetings that we, uh, we do like a, a Google meet and we like go over stuff and every week, cause people draw on like their sheets of paper to present their ideas within our PowerPoints. Every week, Sam has somehow snuck in a time clock onto every UI thing that he has submitted. He's like, I think this can work. They guys can, I'm like, Sam, we don't have the amount of people you need to track. <laughs> he wants to track everybody, how long they're alive, when they move bunkers and they do all this stuff. There's always time clocks stuck in all of his uh, versions of the new UI that I have to remove on a, on a weekly basis. boy, Sammy. Collect it now, figure it out later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this kind of plays right into this. Uh, Patty Rice is wondering, Sam and Pat, what are things – you want to find a way to quantify in a stat, but have a hard time finding um, or placing a metric to. It'd be time. I mean, time's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing that it's, it's reasonable to be able to do. I don't think we're to the point where we can do kills. I just, I just think it's not, it's not accurate enough. Um, so I think time is the next hurdle to get over. Mm. And that's, that's time alive during the point. Uh, like Sam said, like uh, for like insert bunkers, guys that are trying to get out wide, right? Those twos, like how long it takes them to make the move, what the most effective time is, uh, how long players, like how long snake guys stay alive. Like I think that's like really creating that that time metric for the ones, the twos, and the threes would really be something that would be great to have. And yeah. I mean, that's that's but that's once again, that's money, that's energy, that's a lot being put into it. Yeah, it holds a tremendous amount of weight though. Um, and any, any paintball player that's played professionally or not knows that if you just let the game develop a little bit, things mature and you're able to make moves and then the magic happens. But if you, you know, force things and rush through moves or rush through gunfights and all this type of stuff, and you get dinked out early, it has a tremendous effect on the team. And then obviously also it's going to show up on that stat sheet showing that you're being eliminated early. So it's very important to take your time and Figure out all the details before before making mistakes. Essentially, is what it is. If you if you choose, because it's a choice to gunfight, it's a choice to make a move, it's a choice to to do these things, and you have to be really smart with how you make those choices out there. So everybody, please show love for uh, paintball stats. Go to the Instagram, go like, follow, share everything that we can to support these guys and everything that they're doing, and then go check out the new website. Uh, when it drops, it should be hopefully in the, the next, I would say, I don't know, a few weeks or so. Yeah, definitely after the event, just because it's so close now. We had a small hiccup on the way that we wanted to do it. I think we were a little aggressive on some of the stuff, um, but uh, we'll have it out here in the next uh, next couple weeks. Awesome. Yeah, sweet. Can't wait. Fellas, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing for the sport. Thank you for the dedication. Again, it's a huge step. Um, and, you know, my only wish is that we remain consistent with it because, you know, this is something we need for the long haul. So, um, you know, I look forward to seeing how this continues to grow and evolve. And uh, see you guys in a couple of weeks. I'll I'll see, see you boys in, See you in Texas. See you Let's tomorrow. go, boys. See you in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. Bye. Peace. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the orange Patreon link in the corner and support the show. We greatly appreciate it. We have tiers as low as $1.99 a month. That is nothing, guys. It'll give you access to the Discord where you get access to the players chat and get to mingle with the entire PTG community. We have tons of different pros in there. Tyler and myself are very active, and it's an amazing way to support the show. We also have amazing other tiers if you want to be one of the best want to be a goat sign up for the goat tier it's the greatest way to support us and each month we do a private live stream show 
one-on-one -on -one kind of thing to where it's just the goats and Tyler and myself will bring in some special guests every now and then, but you get to ask us questions in real time, live, on the air, and you get lots of inside juicy news that we don't share uh, on the show. So, as always, we will see you guys very soon.